Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to discuss inspecting tandem circuit breakers. So this video is a long time coming. I first wrote about this topic in a 2011 issue of the Ashy Reporter, which means I wrote the article sometime in 2010, and I've been meaning to record a video on this for a long time, but it's kind of a complicated topic, so I've been slacking on doing this, but all right, here goes. If you're a home inspector and you see a tandem circuit breaker inside of an electrical panel, you should ask yourself, does this breaker belong? Does the electric panel allow the installation of tandem circuit breakers? And to, to understand what I'm talking about, let's take a look at some example tandem breakers. Inside this panel here, at the top of the panel, we've got a two pole 60 amp breaker or a 240 volt breaker. Those are just traditional breakers, nothing special going on there. But then the next one down, we have a tandem 15 amp breaker. There's basically two 15 amp breakers in the space of a single breaker. They, that, is, that is two overcurrent protection devices taking up the space of a single breaker. And then on the next slot down, we've got the same thing, but they're rated at 20 amps. And you may even see tandem breakers with different sizes. You could have like a 15 and a 20 or a 20 and a 15. I've seen plenty of those, they exist. They're not as common, but they're out there. And then at the bottom of this panel, we have a single traditional 20 amp breaker. So as you can tell from these photos, tandem breakers are essentially two breakers taking up the spot of a single breaker. There's a lot of different names for them. People might call them slimline or half height or twin breakers or cheater breakers. I've heard that before, it's kind of implying that people are cheating and that these breakers are never supposed to be installed. I've actually heard electricians say that. They say, well, yeah, we could put tandems in here, but that's really not as good and you really shouldn't do that. That's a bunch of garbage. If a panel is designed for tandem breakers, there is nothing less good about it. There's nothing inferior. There's nothing bad. There's nothing wrong with this. If the panel manufacturer allows it, it's not cheating. It's only cheating if people do it and the panel isn't designed for it. So that's what we're trying to get at as home inspectors. Are these allowed or not? To know if it's allowed, it helps to understand the history of when they came into being and when they were allowed and when limits went into place for these panels. So if we go back in time a little, if you go pre-1965, the standard that we had for electric panels was this NI, class NI, which meant non-interchangeable. I'm not going to get into the specifics of all that, but a lot of these old panels, you'll be able to find a label that says that. Sometimes you might need to hunt. Like in this one here, if we kind of duck down and we look underneath the breakers, we can find that standard there where you see there's a little tag and it's like, it kind of helps to have a flashlight to look really carefully. You can see where it says class NI here. For this age of panel, there was no hard and fast rule about whether or not tandem breakers were allowed. The manufacturer may have made the panel to accept it. They may not have. Who knows? But you could have an electrician go to an electrical supply store. They can buy special tandem breakers that are designed for these really old panels before there were any rules about it. And you could essentially fill the whole panel up with tandem breakers and you wouldn't be breaking any rules. You might be kind of overloading things and it might not necessarily be safe, but it would technically meet code. And we're talking pre-1965. Now, from 1965 up until 2008, there's a standard in place, UL67, which says all the panel boards manufactured for lighting and appliance needs need to be, they need to limit the total number of circuits installed. And this was a designation called CTL, Circuit Total Limiting, or Class CTL. So all the panel boards that we end up seeing in houses made during that time period 
again, 1965 to 2008, are going to be class CTL panel boards. And we can always find that sticker inside the panel. And the manufacturer needs to have a physical limitation method for preventing tandem breakers from being installed in a panel in places where they don't belong. So there's some type of physical rejection feature. We'll come back to that in a second, but I, I do want to talk about a little formula that they came up with to limit the number of breakers that could be installed. Now, number one, the NEC said you can't have more than 42 circuits in a panel. Like, that's it. If it's a lighting and appliance panel, you can't have more than 42. But there was also a formula that that class or that uh, UL67 had that limited the number of circuits based on the amperage for the panel. And the way it worked was you would take the total amperage and you'd multiply that by the number of poles. And in a traditional 240 volt wired 120, 240 home, pretty much everything we see for residential, it's gonna be two poles. So you would take the number of amps, multiply it by poles, and then you divide it by 10. So if you had a 100 amp panel, multiply it by two, that's 200. You divide by 10, that'd be 20. That's the max number of circuits we could have. And so if we double that, you know, let's say you got a 200 amp panel, two poles, divide by 10, that'd give us 40. So it means that if you got a 200 amp panel, the max number of breakers you could have is 40, or the max number of circuits you could have would be 40. So real quick, let's run that down. 100 amps, 20 circuits. 150 amps, 30 circuits. 200 amps, 40 circuits. And this is, this is stuff that's helpful to know because as a home inspector, if I see a home manufactured or built during this time or the panel was put in during this time, I can look at that panel just about from across the room and I can know if tandem breakers are allowed in that or not. If I see a 100 amp panel and I see there's 10 spaces on the left, 10 spaces on the right, I know that tandem breakers aren't allowed. That is our full 20 right there and I don't need to go hunting inside the panel board looking at diagrams and model numbers and all this other stuff. I just know at a glance that this panel does not accept tandem breakers. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of the technical formula stuff, but it, it, it's really helpful to understand this. And then in 2008, the NEC removed the max number of breakers. They said the 42 goes away and the class CTL standards kind of, I, I could be mistaken about this, but I think they just kind of went away to the point where the manufacturer, they, they still had to have a rejection feature, but you didn't have these formulas for the number of circuits based on amperage. All that went away and they just said, look, you're the manufacturer, you figure out what's safe and then publish it and make sure people don't install more breakers than what you're gonna allow. And so today, you know, you might see, you might see a 100 amp panel with 40 spaces in it. We, manufacturers have gone and allowed a lot more. So what does this mean for an older installation where somebody installed tandem breakers in places where they don't belong? Who knows? It's tough to say. As a home inspector, I don't make a huge judgment about this. I do list the concern when I'm writing up my inspection report. I would say that this panel does not allow tandem breakers. Tandem breakers were added and this may have caused damage to the panel. They may have damaged the breakers to get them to fit and get an electrician to come out and verify that it's safe and fix it as needed. And if an electrician wants to come out and put their blessing on it and say, yeah, we, we packed this thing full of tandem breakers and I'm cool with it, then I'll let them sign off. So I talked about rejection features. Let's take a closer look at some of these rejection features. In this first example, we're looking at a panel board with a bunch of bus stabs where some of them accept tandem breakers, some of them don't. If we look at the very top of the panel, these first three that are kind of visible do not accept tandem breakers. And then we go down a little farther and you see you've got these special notches in the breakers. All of these bus stabs with the notches will accept a tandem breaker. And a tandem breaker has a piece of metal that fits inside there. 
let's take a look at a couple of breakers side by side. You see the tandem breaker on the left. We've got this piece of metal that would prevent it from being installed in a panel that doesn't allow them. But on a standard breaker, you don't have any such rejection feature. So those are some of the physical rejection features you'd find on tandem breakers. Now, if you have somebody who's hell-bent on installing a tandem breaker in a panel that doesn't allow them, they may have damaged the breaker. I've seen that done. Don't ask me how I have these pictures. But here's an example of a tandem breaker where somebody actually broke off part of the back of it. I think there used to be a piece of metal in here or something. And they actually modified the breaker to get it to fit in that panel. Or you could have somebody who takes a saw to part of those bus stabs in the panel and cuts out the metal to make a tandem breaker fit. People do crazy things to get their way. So those would be things we'd never want to see. Now as a home inspector, I usually don't get to see any of that. All of that is all completely concealed. And the only way I would know this for certain, whether someone damaged any of that, would be if I started taking stuff apart. Like I'd actually have to pull the breaker out of the panel. And as a home inspector, I'm not there to do work. That would be the definition of doing work. I'm not there to do work on the panel. I'm only there to look at it. So this is where an electrician would need to come in pull some breakers, take a look inside, see what everything looks like to either put their blessing on it or say, no, we want to fix this. Oh, and I mentioned that there are these older breakers that you can get for, well, there's newer breakers that you can get for older panels, the panels that predate the CTL standard. You could actually use tandem breakers in those anywhere you want. So you'd buy a special tandem breaker and it says not for use in class CTL assemblies and it doesn't have a rejection feature built in. We're get, it's getting really confusing now, I know. But you're not gonna get those at your traditional Home Depot or, or home improvement stores. You gotta go to an electrical supply store and the idea is that only somebody who really knows what they're doing should be able to get their hands on these breakers. But I've still seen them installed in panels where they don't belong to know if you're looking at a non-CTL breaker, you usually have to look at the side of the breaker. And to see the side, you usually need to pull it out. Here's a picture of what that label is gonna look like. It says right on there, for replacement use only, not for CTL assembly. So we would only be allowed to use these on panels made prior to 1965. Okay, so a lot of info, you're a home inspector, you're coming up to a house, you want to know if these things are allowed or not. I've given you some base knowledge. How can we figure this out? Well, number one, if it were me, I'd start by just counting up the number of circuits and thinking about when the panel was installed. Okay, so let's say it's a 200 amp panel. Maybe you could allow up to 40 circuits. You've got a bunch of regular breakers and a bunch of tandem breakers. Just because it meets the formula doesn't mean that the panel necessarily allows tandem breakers. We still need to look inside the panel and make sure that the manufacturer allows this. So we should be able to find a diagram telling us which spaces in that panel allow tandem breakers and which don't. Maybe it's all of them, maybe it's none, maybe it's some. It varies based on panel to panel. So looking at this first illustration, this is a 100 amp panel. There are 20 potential circuits in here, but there's actually only 12 bus stabs. And the way you get 20 circuits is that those top four allow full size regular breakers, but then the bottom eight allow tandem breakers. So you could actually have 16 circuits at the bottom, bottom portion of the panel, four more at the top for a total of 20. And so when it's, it's telling us that those bottom eight spots all accept tandems, the top four do not. Now on this next panel diagram, this is a little trickier. We've got a, a diagram here that shows that on the top four spaces, they don't allow tandems. On the next four spaces down, they do. So you could have another eight circuits there, four tandem breakers. And then on the rest of the panel going down, they don't allow tandem. So they're really specific. So those, those couple of bus stabs, it'd basically be two bus stabs for four breakers, two on each side, and they could all be tandems for a total of eight. These two bus stabs might have a little bit different notch or a little bit different shape to allow the use of tandem breakers. And then going down the panel, 
nothing else allows tandems. So, I mean, if I'm gonna know, I gotta be able to find this diagram. And then on the next diagram here, you see they're labeled one through 20. There's nothing special indicating tandem breakers. This panel does not allow tandem breakers at all. And on the next one, I'll let you take a look at this, think it through, come to your own conclusion. You should have kind of seen a pattern here by this point. So at the top half of the panel, basically the first 20 spots, you're allowed to have traditional circuit breakers, nothing special, you can't have tandems. And then on the bottom half, you can use traditional or tandem breakers. That's where we got the double lines. So I think we're starting to see a pattern here. You're usually going to see something special to indicate whether tandem breakers are allowed or not. But there's also some times where you might need to take a look at the model number and think about that to help determine if tandem breakers are allowed. Now, a lot of time manufacturers will give it away in the model number. So let's go through some examples. These are all real model numbers that are pulled off of manufacturers' websites. First one, we've got G3040BL1200. I'd assume the 200 at the end refers to a 200 amp panel. The 30 at the beginning indicates that there are 30 spaces in the panel, and the 40 indicates you can have a max of 40 circuits. So it would tell me that you've got 30 spaces, 40 circuits, you're allowed to use 10 tandem breakers in that panel. On the next one, it's a G3030, 30 spaces, 30 circuits, no tandem breakers allowed. Next, we've got a BR1220. It means you've got 12 spaces, 20 circuits are allowed, so eight tandem breakers are allowed in this panel. Then we've got a BR1212 or 1212. Again, 12 spaces, 12 circuits, no tandem breakers allowed in this panel. And then we've got a home C20 blah, blah, blah. There's nothing special listed here. This panel has 20 spaces. It allows 20 circuits, no tandems allowed. So the model number is not definitive, but it does give you some clues. Helps give you an idea of whether this panel might or might not accept tandems. And then other times you might even see a label inside the panel that just says plain as day, max number of circuits. Like in this example here, the panel manufacturer is telling you no more than 20 circuits. All right, I've been waxing for a ridiculous amount of time on these tandem breakers. I'm gonna have to end this video at some point here. So I hope all of this made sense. I hope this is helpful. I thank you for taking the time to watch if, you're, if you've stuck around this long and have a good one. Take care.